This episode is going to be a bit of a crossover between geology and color theory. So far, the color spaces that I've talked about are all really based on the RGB system. HSL was made for TVs in the early 1930s, and HSV was made to make the RGB system more human-friendly. These systems don't accurately reflect how the human eye sees color, and that can be an issue if you're trying to use them to compare or pick colors to use together. Ideally, you would want to use a perceptually uniform color space to make something like a block palette. This means that if you move the same distance, the perceived color difference would be the same. I plan to get into this more on a separate video, so if that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. Today, I want to talk about the first perceptually uniform color space, and it's one that's actually still used in geology today. Hey, Editor Nice here. Before we get into what this episode is about, I wanted to say a few things. I'm back from working in the remote Australian Outback. I was there for about a month and a half. Uh, the previous few episodes were ones that I'd finished before I left, and this video was recorded, but I didn't have time to edit it. When I got back home, my basement was flooded, which is where my recording setup is, so I'm dealing with that and trying to get caught up on things. I'm uh, glad to be home, and if you're curious about what I was doing down under, I, I plan to make a video talking about that soon. I have a bunch of new video ideas I, I'm excited about and can't wait to get started on, so back to the episode. Around 1900, there were several attempts to try to fit a color space into a sphere or other solid shape. Another issue is that if you say a name of a color, like light purple, that's very subjective, and different people will have different thoughts on what that exact color is. An artist by the name of Albert Munsell wanted to be able to use numbers instead of names for colors. He went about making a color system, and it was the first system to separate out hue, value, and chroma into perceptually uniform spaces. He determined the spacings of colors along these dimensions by taking measurements of the human visual response. He ultimately determined that you could not force the color space into a sphere and ended up with something like this. So the Munsell system is very close to HSL and HSV, where you have light on top, dark on the bottom, you have your hue going around the circumference, and then colors become more saturated the further you get away from the center. Munsell divided his system into five principal hues, red, yellow, green, blue, and purple. He also added five intermediate colors, which are just named by combining the two principal hues next to it. So between red and purple is red-purple. He gave each one of these hues 10 steps, and five here is in the middle. It's common today to break these hues up into fours, so we end up with a 2.5R, a 5R, a 7.5, and a 10R. So what I'm showing you isn't necessarily the entire color system. You can have more colors in between here. The nice thing about using numbers is that you can use decimal places and you can have as many increments of color as you need. This is a bit of a confusing system name-wise, and I really didn't fully understand it until I started working on this video. Let's get rid of most of this and look at one slice through the system. So here we have 10 purple-blue going over to... 10 yellow. In this system, you have black on the bottom, represented by zero, and pure white on the top, represented by 10. Instead of calling it saturation, we use the term chroma in this system to represent how pure of a color you're at. Here, I'm using only the even numbers. Like I said earlier, you can subdivide this as much as you need. And technically, there, there is no max value for chroma. There are some like really fluorescent colors that are in the 30s, I believe, for chroma value. So if you are naming a specific color in the Munsell color system, you end up with something like this, 10 PB78. So that's the hue 10 purple blue with a seven value and an eight chroma. So what does this have to do with the geology? Well, if you're trying to describe something in the natural world, color can be a very important part of that. Since an object's color is dependent on the light that is hitting it, you need a physical reference in the same location of known color to accurately determine an object's color. Munsell publishes books of color that you can use to do this. In 1930, the USGS, the United States Geological Survey, adopted the Munsell system to describe soil color. The Munsell company still publishes a subset of the color system just for soils that you can take with you into the field and use as a reference to color 
a soil. The colors included are limited to the range of colors normally found in soil, and I took that subset and arranged them here in 3D. So the color of soil is important for a variety of reasons, and it's something that my wife does for part of her job. Welcome to the episode, Nice Wife. Thank you. Nice husband. <laughs> see. So have you ever seen the soil part of the Munsell color system arranged in 3D? Not isolated out for soil colors. Yeah, what do you think? It's pretty neat. It's difficult looking at the book and kind of visualizing it in this manner. So you bring the color sheets into the field with you? Yes, we bring the soil book into the field. So what can color tell you about like a soil? The color tells you chemically a little bit about the soil, specifically what the iron has done in the soil. Um, iron turns soil yellow, brown, red. Uh, the reduction of iron turns soil gray, green, blue, and purple. So that's the uh, that's why we have this weird little green uh, wing off to the side here. Yes. And these you are see, you don't see the purple because it's probably the most uncommon. <laughs> yeah, I think this is purple over here. Yeah, technically, yeah. But yeah, and these are called the Glade colors. You get these colors from uh, oxygen poor anoxic environment. Yeah, Glade colors come from saturated anaerobic conditions. And the browns, yellows, reds come from uh, essentially ox oxidation of iron and manganese. I forgot. Also manganese. Gotta love manganese. Yep. The coloring of the soil can determine the oxidation state of iron and other minerals present. Like, why is that important? So there's a lot of reasons why it's important. One specific reason is you can tell what the saturation conditions are underground. So high water levels, high water tables seasonally high water tables. You wouldn't want to put a septic area there and you wouldn't want to probably build uh, foundations where you have um, a lot of water. So it helps in land use determination. One of the many things you can do with soil mm. color. I thought it would be fun if we could try to color some soils in Minecraft and see if that tells us anything about them. Would that you, uh, yeah, can I use your expertise? <laughs> You can call it that. Since you can't color these blocks off of the monitor with the Munsell cards, I printed these textures out and we're going to we're going to use those. And I'll say that the printer was not calibrated and the printer's not that good and the paper is okay. So, this is mostly just for fun and not like an exact like color reproduction of the of the textures. So ideally this would be one, a piece of soil. Two, it would be in the daylight without shadow, as much losing as much shadow as possible. And it would be like damp, not saturated, not dry, but damp. Like we missed soils in the field mm -hmm. to color them. So Minecraft Dirt has a lot of colors in it. So you would select matrix color, which is your dominant mineral horizon color. So I would say there's actually like, so you'd have a mix matrix here. So you have multiple colors that would be matrix. Now keeping in mind, this is a fun fact. There's no redoxomorphic features in Minecraft dirt. If you consider the gray spots gravel. Right. That's my interpretation. Right. So in the really real world, gray spots in soil would be iron depletions. Mm-hmm. So those would have their own color, and that would matter because you'd have a depleted horizon, possibly. So I'm going to say that we have a mixed matrix of 3, 3, 4, 3, and 5, 4. That's, I would say, the dominant three matrix colors present. And 10 Y? 10 Y R. R, yes. Yeah, so what does that tell you? Um, so it would, so this type of brown, it's a darker brown, so there's probably some organic content. In the, in the, the Midwest Plains portion of North America, those are usually glacial soils. It's a mix of sand, lust, and, and clay, higher clay content because of glaciation, essentially just running the land down into a fine powder. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to color the gray spots. I'm going to pretend the gray spots are depletions, not gravel. And I'm going to retrieve the Glade color sheet. And we're just going to see where this falls. I actually already found it. It was pretty fast. It is uh, Glade 5N. Interesting. So if this was a normal soil, you'd have depletions, meaning that you'd have a water table that was present in that horizon for extended periods of time through the seasons. So you'd have 
iron depleting and um, being stripped away from the mineral grains of the soil. Anyway, um, 10YR21, I would say, is the color of of Minecraft mud, which would be like a topsoil type color if we were yeah. if we were talking about like where where would I see 10YR21 so, in soils? It would be the top A horizon. Well, it's interesting that these are two these aren't that far apart from each other color wise. Well, you can probably actually tell a story of, <laughs> of the soil with the Minecraft soil. So the 10YR21 being a dark topsoil would actually probably be your A horizon. So it would be the surface soil. And then that 10YR33, that would be your B horizon. So it'd be the clay collection like layer be below the A horizon. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then going to the to the new, to the third block there, which, what is that? In this is clay. Know? Clay, got it. So clay, which is great because, you know, clay is super important. Can you rearrange these for me, just for fun? Mm -hmm. Okay, bam, soil horizon. Mm -hmm. So if we were to color this one, I'm not even looking at the 10YR sheet. And I'm not even looking at the 7.5 YR sheet either. I'm gonna go straight to the Glade colors. So Glade 2, 10 B51. As you're moving through soil through soil profiles, you have various horizons. So a high clay content horizon down there would indeed very easily could be gray uh, due to the um, reduction of iron that's that's probably occurring. All right, and then we're gonna do even though it's labeled as terracotta, it kind of represents a old soil so Paleo i think soil. that we can yes i think that we can color it as well sure so if it were um so i've i've never colored a paleosol i've seen them but they were you know you weren't allowed to touch them they were um in the in near bend oregon um there's some mm -hmm. really fantastic paleosol uh, hills yeah, you'll see uh, in the Badlands, uh, North America also yep. have, uh, and the Painted Desert also. In, of course, in yeah. Arizona. We've got a lot of great paleosols here. Mm -hmm. Other countries do too. It's pretty fantastic if you get to see them, but yeah. um, you're typically not allowed to touch them. They're kind of protected. This is actually a bit difficult to, yeah. to, to find a true color to um, for, as far as the printout goes, but um, I thought I would be on the 7.5, but I'm, I'm actually back at the 10 simply because that's red and... The printout's a bit more brown, mm -hmm. but um, this is coloring out to a 10YR44. So that's cool. Soil in, in Minecraft is cool. Soil in real life is cool. Yeah, this is actually, I'm actually surprised that these colors make sense to some degree. Are you talking about, so the column, the column on the right there? Well, not just the column, but the colors, like they are the within the realm of, re of, of reality. For sure. Like, Again, like, there's a lot of variabilities in soils if we were... In um, you know the southern states of North America, we'd have really really red mm -hmm. soils that you know they make brick out of. And yeah, then yeah, um, yeah. down in Tennessee, it's always like like you like stain your clothes <laughs> red yeah. like walking around. Wisconsin has layers of white in their soil from mm -hmm. uh, e, e horizons from really cool stuff chemically. My public service announcement is that soil is cool, and if anybody has interest in soil their local junior colleges and universities might have soil classes and soil judging and from a career standpoint you can be a professional soil scientist so there is a lot of things that you can do you and make good it. money yes actually well it was nice to meet you finally <laughs> there isn't a real convenient way to convert something like srgb into moncel so i'm not going to be adding it into the color world and i don't really think it's that useful for Minecraft, but it is the first perceptually uniform color space, and it's still used today in geology and uh, a few other applications. There are newer color spaces that are more uniform, and those are the ones that I'm going to be focusing on uh, adding into the color world next. But for now, that's all I got. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Mm -hmm. Dad! No, no, no. Dad!